and uh, all of the congregations and meetings. We come together and are committed to giving power to the voice of the people and, uh, and acting together on issues that affect our families and our lives. Our mission statement tells us that we develop leadership skills in ordinary people like you and me so that they can engage effectively in public life. Our number one strategy is building relationships. We focus on building relationships by acting together on issues that are important to our families. We build relationships with our members within our institutions. We build relationships with the public and private sector. We build relationships with the elected officials. From the building of relationships. We do this through a special process. We have one-on-one um, -on -one conversations. We have house meetings where we, have, we give people stories and learn about what life is like in the communities and the struggles they face every day. One of the important issues identified in this process was Esperanza Care. A health care pro a program for undocumented residents in Montgomery County. Free service, free health services for people who did not follow up their health care. Some of the other issues Lopez was working on housing and renters' rights, restoring, restoring with justice. Today, we will be joined by four candidates running for the County Board of Supervisors. Thank you. 
hear these commitments of working with COPA from our guests, please show them their appreciation. We are an organization that celebrates true commitment, commitment that is connected to action, not empty words. We're not simply interested in nice comments, catchphrases, or ideological positions. We're interested in what they are willing to do. And so when you hear a commitment for an action on our agenda, and we'll talk about that, that is something we're celebrating, and we want to hear from you loud and clear. Got that? Loud and clear. As you came in the door, you were given an agenda of the public. How many times? We've already started the agenda, but the important pieces of this agenda is that we will tell you what the focus is. We will have house meetings, which is I just talked about that. We will have the time to talk down the stories and uh, interact with other people on this this as well. We will share the public stories, the stories, the stories that we heard. There will be time for a teaching moment on public agenda in the county. There will be time for conversation with the candidates to hear their reaction to their stories, Esperanza Care Expansion, affordable housing, and to meet with Boca on this agenda. The next piece is a very important piece. It's called, it's a call to action, where we are going to ask everyone that's here today to go back to their institutions, to, to go back to their institutions and talk to voters about today's commitments. To join a core team, to join an issue team, to become a sustaining investor, and a reminder to work and fill out your census. That is going to be the action and important um, action for you as a core leader today. We will also have um, commitments from candidates and commitments from other engagements. So I'm really proud the agenda as you can turn what OPA is about. Um, and we are um, 27 institutions and we thank you to be part of this. And we have one and I to support us when we do. And we do all of this um, so that we can take action on issues that are important for families and our communities. As I mentioned earlier, we are broad-based. means we work on different issues at different times. Some of us have been working on this, but outside here, some of them are working on restorative justice and others on renters' rights and protection. And we are uh, in different, and we do this in different cities. You know, there's people working in Seaside, in Salinas, in Santa Cruz. Uh, so a lot of the work that we do is throughout the county, and, and, and as long as it affects the families, and we can work on an action here in the new as part of So, all of you have received this agenda, and we are going to ask you, you know, how did this agenda sound to you? Is this something that is, you know, you're agreeable with? If you approve this agenda today, please raise it up as an approval for you. Thank you, and give yourself a nice round of applause. Stand on affordable housing and renter protections? 
And lastly, and this is what I want to hear from you when they say yes, will they meet with COBA on this agenda in the first month of August? Yes or no? If it's no, silence. If it's yes, I want to hear a real strong you applaud whatever you can do that they are willing to commit and work with COVID in the future. So will you please stand as we meet and welcome our co-chairs, Reverend Vicki Elder and Mr. Reyes. As we stand together in love and welcome you.
God grant us with serenity to accept things I cannot change. Courage to change the things we can change. And the wisdom to know the difference.
Alamein City of Seaside.
My real learning has been about being always committed to build and protect what is common. We cannot take common sense as something already given. We have to work for it. We must build it together. And this is how, this is how we start to claim our own agency. Common sense to, the, to be common had to be created by all together. It is through community organizing that I have affirmed my conviction and believe in true common sense. It is through community organizing that I have learned and incorporated an effective methodology to make common sense truthful and viable. It is with you and your leadership that I have affirmed this belief. So the common sense we are building is not only mine, it is ours. It is not exclusive, it is inclusive. As many more are joining our efforts, it is never finalized, it is always open to improvement and creativity. Our personal experiences and our stories are feeding the call to build a truly shared common sense. After all these many years of being in communities organized for relational power in action, we can say that we are building a stronger common sense and common life here in Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito counties. Thank you for that wisdom. So now, on with our program. You've all consented to today's agenda as previously outlined by Marianne and Sally. So just to review for our guests. In just a moment, we're going to be gathering in small group house meetings where we will share our individual stories with one another about the biggest issues currently putting pressure on our families or loved ones. The candidates will be invited to join in these house meetings to listen to these stories. We've allotted about 20 minutes for this process, and each table has a leader who will facilitate the discussion. Then we'll come back into the large room and hear a few representative stories back in that public setting. After which, we'll be formally asking, excuse me, left out of spec, we're going to get a public education uh, talk that, that will help us understand the role of county politics so that we get very clear about what these candidates have within their power and what is outside their power. That will be followed by formally asking the four candidates if they're willing to commit, once elected, to working with COPA around these and other emerging, emerging issues to improve the lives of the folks in our communities. Following that, we're going to have a call to action where we'll be asking for our own collective commitments. And then we'll conclude with a review of just what we've accomplished here today. So, we're going to now begin to break into our house meetings. You each received a number when you came in, and you should be sitting at the table that corresponds to that number. If you're not, we'd ask you to move and get, in, get to the right table. Now it is the time in which uh, we are going to hear some stories. Uh, uh, three people will share their stories, and that will be uh, a good way of uh, for us all uh, to listen to some of the conversations that you have in your tables and in the house meetings. Wonderful. So we have. We invite Jocelyn, Paul, and Veronica to come to the mic. Mi nombre es Jocelyn, vivo en Salinas y soy miembro de la Iglesia Santa María. 
Tengo 32 años, de los cuales 14 he trabajado en el campo. En el mes de julio me lastimé los tendones de mis manos y estuve recibiendo atención médica por parte de mi trabajo. Tiempo después me negaron mi caso y me quedé sin aseguranza para cubrir mis gastos médicos. Pero yo seguí teniendo mucho dolor y no sabía qué hacer. Me comentaron que hay un programa muy bueno en la clínica llamado Esperanza Quedo. Fui a hacer una cita y me la dieron después de un mes por ser paciente nuevo. Cuando fui, apliqué para el programa, pero lamentablemente me dijeron que el tiempo de espera es de un año. Así que el costo de mi consulta fue de 268 dólares. Las medicinas que me recetan cuestan más de 100 dólares y las terapias físicas que me recomendó el doctor y que aún no he tomado por sus altos costos son de 800 dólares. Para mí es imposible cumplir estos gastos porque ahora estoy sin empleo. Esperanza Care es mi esperanza. Much closer. Thank you. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Thank you for your share. 
Nigerians. And now we're going to have a teaching by Jack Herbert about COPA's agenda with Monterey County and so learning about exactly what falls under county purpose. $1.5 billion. That's one five eight zero. $1.5 billion, 5,300 employees. With, this, with these resources, Monterey County has a direct impact on the things we care about, such as health care, community safety, behavioral health, and housing. We want, if we want to improve the quality of life for our families, we need a relationship with the county university advisors. Today we're going to be concentrating on the problems where the county has primary responsibility. The county provides the primary safety net for health care and behavior of health. They share responsibility with city governments for community safety and housing. So we're going to concentrate today on these issues. The county budget is set by the board supervisors. That $1.5 billion is spent in four primary areas, four areas. Health and sanitation, that's the health department and the Tibet and hospital. Public safety and protection, that includes things like the sheriff's office, the district attorney, and probation, as well then as public assistance and general administration of the county. More than half of this budget is for programs that the county operates on behalf of the state and federal government. For these programs, the state and federal government provides the funds and sets the rules. The general fund makes up roughly 45% of this total $1.5 billion budget. The general fund is money that's raised through local taxes like property tax and sales tax and gasoline tax, as well as licenses and permits and fines and charges for uh, services that the county provides. But even within the general fund, um, much of the money is already designated uh, by law and is required to be used for specific programs. What I'm doing here is making the circle smaller and smaller to we're down now to the part of the general fund, the $232 million where the county board supervisors has discretion, right? They call it a discretionary fund that the supervisors can then allocate to meet local priorities. Several years ago, Cole was hearing stories about undocumented people who would go to the county clinics and would get prescriptions for medication or would be uh, told to go get lab tests that they couldn't afford. Since they couldn't afford the tests, they would wait. And if they got very sick, then they would go to the emergency room. It seemed like this was both very expensive health care and very poor quality health care. So Hope took this up with the health director. He was moved by our stories, like the story we've heard today. And at that very meeting, the health director said, I'm going to allocate $50,000 to cover prescription drugs and lab tests. When we evaluated that meeting, we knew that we had made a big breakthrough. But think about it. Given the size of the meeting, and given that the health department's budget is $350 million, we didn't think that $50,000 was adequate to what we needed. So we started meeting with each of the supervisors individually to see what they thought. Within eight months, the Board of Supervisors voted to allocate $500,000 to the pilot project. Yeah. And this came out of that discretionary part of the general fund. The pilot project paid for prescription drugs, lab tests, and x rays for undocumented immigrants who didn't have insurance. This project went on for two years. One of our strongest allies during that time was Supervisor Jane Parker. She recognized the importance of this program and the fairness of this program and the county that is so directly 
Mr. McShane. Yeah, my group spoke at length about the concerns associated with housing equity. There was a <laughs> great concern brought up about undocumented health care and the fact that one in seven of our residents are undocumented. And we've got a big challenge and a lot of work to do. Uh, Paul was in our group and he was very, very telling in his personal testimony to the need for more mental health assistance in the county. You know, more than anything, I'm moved and was moved by the power of Cobot. We're stronger together, we're stronger if we're unified, and we're stronger if we can rely on one another. In our group, there was bilingual exchange, there was a lot of heartfelt, uh, ongoing explanations to what do we do with children, three children in this case, and Castro Hill, nothing to do after school. What do you think that they're going to fall into? And if there is something to do, it's expensive. So there's tremendous need and an opportunity for leadership at the county level. Thank you. Mr. Miller. My group spoke about immigration and about housing. California is the wealthiest state in the nation. Why do we have a housing crisis here? If California was its own country, we'd have one of the fifth largest economies. Yet we can't solve some of our housing problems. We have, we have politicians have been focusing on the issues. And I know I would focus on the issues of housing and immigration. I got a tear out of my eye today. The young lady that spoke to us earlier about her husband and his, his immigration issues. That affects all of us. Nobody should have to worry about in that situation. We need strong leaders that will work with housing, work with immigration issues. We can solve these problems. We have to solve them together. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to start with, with Ms. Chapman. And the question you're going to have two minutes, two minutes for, for this uh, question. So if elected, like Laura said, we're not going to repeat the, the, the question. If elected, will you work with COPA to sustain? and expand Esperanza Care, including the use of general fund dollars to do so? What other county policies and services would you support to protect undocumented immigrants? You have two minutes here, but remember if there's a yes or no question. <laughs>
Keep in mind that Monterey County has the highest percent of undocumented of any county in California. We have huge challenges, and so we have to step up as a county. We have and we will. And more importantly, the state has prioritized undocumented citizens and citizens in the making. We will work together with our electeds. I have an excellent working relationship and support of Senator Ana Caballero, as well as Assemblyman okay. Robert Rivas. And together, we must work towards solutions. As also mentioned, there's other things that need to happen to protect our undocumented. In the city of Salinas, I'm very proud to say as a welcoming city, we worked very closely with each of our department heads. Every single one of our employees went some level of training in how to be better sensitive and open to providing services, not just to everyone, but to be proactive in, ability, in the ability to gain access to services. It's so often that even a, a, a tree trimming or a, a, a offer for assistance for children in our parks and rec is turned away because there is concern and there is fear. As a supervisor, I will provide leadership. I will commit to training at the employee level when it comes to all services being available to everyone, including those that are undocumented. And again, we'll support the expansion of and protection of experience and care. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is, is like I said, the least that we can offer. So there's a waiting list. We need 
need to get the waiting list addressed. We need to make sure that everyone who needs access has access. Um, there are many different pots of money that the county has. General fund is one of those pots of money. So if we need to use general fund, yeah, let's figure out how to use general fund. If we can find other funds that are more protected over the long run, let's go find those other funds and figure out how to make it work. So that is my commitment to continue doing this work with you and in partnership with you. Um, in terms of uh, our undocumented uh, neighbors and friends, there's so much more that we need to do as a larger community, and it was in the back corner that I sat in this very auditorium where we had a Know Your Rights um, program for our, for our families at the school district. Uh, look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you. Construction of more affordable housing, development of mechanisms to enforce rental protections, such as those guaranteed by Assembly Bill 1482, the Tenant Protection Act of 2019, and we need equity in an expansion of behavioral health system. Please discuss what you will do as a county supervisor to address these concerns. Be sure to focus specifically on matters that are under the influence of county officials. And you'll have two minutes. Sure, thank you. So the best way to predict the future is to look at the past. And as a city council member, I've been very involved in allocating more affordable housing in the region. I'm proud to say that in the city of Salinas, in our city center, we've been able to construct more than 400 units in just the last five years. And that's not enough. We can't just rely on state and federal funding while it's there to construct more units. We need to work with private developers and make sure that they pay their fair share, construct units on the front end of projects, and offer assistance in the form of backfilling fees or even restructuring fees so that more small, affordable units are made possible and profitable. Otherwise, developers will go someplace else. They'll invest in the Central Valley or even in another state. So it does take working together. It does take working to the center. And if there's someone that can get things done on this topic, I really feel strong based on my experience and my proof of track record. When it comes to renters' rights, when it comes to those that are living in uninhabitable and dangerous conditions, I'm proud to say as a council member, having a fully staffed code enforcement, working with the County Association of Realtors, and engaging in supporting AB 1482 is bringing about a lot of reform. And I was a strong supporter, as was our council, in offering rich legislation to AB 1482 because a lot of people were put out on the street or in danger of being put out on the street. When it comes to behavioral health, we have a lot of work to do. Paul's story is just the tip of the iceberg. As a council member, we've led going to the homeless rather than waiting for them to come to a county facility. I sit on the board for Community Human Services. We will be opening the shelter in Seaside and the shelter in Salinas. And the wraparound services that we will provide are just the beginning of what can be done under my leadership as a county supervisor. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Mr. Miller. What surprises me every day that I live here is we have a giant old military base for the I'm sure everybody here has seen it. Why do we have a housing problem? Do we have the space to take care of people, to have lower income housing. We have the ability to do tiny homes for the homeless. The sky's the limit on affordable. But we need strong leaders. We need a strong leader who's going to develop a world of work that makes sense, that helps people in the community. One of the things that I've said my entire campaign when I'm elected, I'm going to leave the county office. I'm going to take it off the corridor and I'm going to put it in downtown Seaside. And then I want to use Captain, the current county office to do tiny homes for the homeless. We see a lot of development and developers coming here to our area to develop certain areas. And usually those developments are in stages. Stage one, stage two, stage three. By the time stage five comes around, that was intended for the, for the affordable units. 
but by the time stage four comes, the developers forgot to or didn't necessarily market the units properly. As your county supervisor, I will make sure that when development is happening, phase one includes affordable housing. Phase one includes low income housing. I will make sure that we are, we are taking care of the homeless. Tiny Homes is working. It's working in Utah. It's working in LA. It's working in Oregon. Mr. Miller, will you also address renters' rights and paying your own off? Yes, uh, yes I will. Uh, behavioral health really starts with clinics. We need to have more accessibility to mental health programs here in Monterey County. I, as your supervisor, I will make sure that we distribute and allocate resources for mental health. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Yes, we need to 
work together again with the cities to make sure that renters are protected and rents aren't raised arbitrarily. Um, equity and expansion of behavioral health system. In the table that I sat at, table three, there was a discussion of a, a child. Sorry, thank you, Michelle. <laughs>
all of you together, and we know that each and every one of you know and have a relationship with a lot of other people. An election is coming up on March 3rd. Now, COVID doesn't endorse any candidates, right? We're nonpartisan, but we feel very strongly about our agenda of issues and take seriously the public commitment that these officials have made to us today. We want people to vote, and we want as many voters to be informed about what happened here today. The commitments the candidates made, what you've heard about COPA work, and the commitments that they have made, the candidates, to meeting with us, right? If you're willing to make this commitment, on your commitment card, it says engage with potential voters. Check that box, all right? COPA's work depends on the strength of its leaders and the relational strength of its member institutions. Each institution has what we call a core team, a group of leaders who are taking the lead in doing COPA work for their institution. If you are moved by what you saw and heard today and want to join the core team of your institution, check the box that you would like to join your core team. And if you are particularly moved by one of the stories you heard on a particular issue or you have a personal connection to a particular issue, check the box that you would like to join the healthcare core team. Care, sorry, the healthcare team or the behavioral health team or the housing team. All right, you heard earlier that COPA is financed by institutions that they do. Like any other organization, we're always looking for financial support so we can expand our staffing and our services. COPA has developed a way for individuals to support our work. Like people who do for other nonprofit organizations, you can sign up and become a COPA sustaining investor. That means you give monthly a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you're comfortable with, and get a tax write off. You can do that today. We have people right here, there's three computers set up. If you want to begin to be a uh, COPA investor, you can do that today, it'll take five minutes. You can also fill out the bottom of your commitment card and give it to a member of your core team. Or when you go home today, you can go to the COPA website, www.copa.nationbuilder.com, and you can sign up at your convenience. Finally, the census 2020 another opportunity to become publicly engaged. While you are completing your commitment card, you will have Sandra Alvarado tell us what we need to know about the census. Hello, my name is Sandra Alvarado, and you have the opportunity to shape the future of your family and community by participating in the 2020 census. Um, in March, you're going to get an invitation in the mail inviting you to fill out the census. And it's an invitation where you would include every single person living in your home, whether they are related to you or not. It you count everybody, you count cultural adults, and you count kids. And you, if somebody's going to have a baby by April 1st, you would count that baby as well. You're going to have until the end of April to fill out your census. If you don't fill it out by then, then somebody will drop by your house and help fill it out. And it's very important that you fill it out Thank you, Sam. All right, so that's our call to action. Any level that you can become engaged, let's go for it. So you're going to talk to 10 people. We hope everybody will do that. You've got the census you can 
participated, join your core team, join an issue team, something speaks dearly to your heart, and become a sustaining investor for COVID. Now, make sure you've got all your forms. If your form is complete, raise it up. Somebody will come around. There's four managers who will help uh, collect these forms. Remember, we have three computers right here. You can make a single donation today or become a monthly sustaining investor so we can increase our staff and our services. All right, we will now hand the floor back to the co-chairs. Thank you.
that men and women from different cultures and with different talents may find with one another the fulfillment, fulfillment of their own humanity. It is in, the, in your name that we pray together. Amen. Well, our song leader isn't here, so it's just the two of us. So give us a help us out here. You got one point.